Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. Philadelphia police turned their attention today to finding the murder weapon that ended the criminal career of Pasquale Pat the Cat's Burrito. They were out searching the rooftops near the murder scene at 11th and Mifflin in South Philadelphia. And then they began a fishing expedition of sorts, searching out about 20 sewer drains with a 75-pound magnet. But the weapon was not among the cans and other debris. The 43-year-old Spirito was found shot to death while sitting in the driver's seat of a silver Cadillac last night. Detectives say it looks like a professional job. The deceased pulled up to 11th and Mifflin. Uh, two males were seen exiting his vehicle and opened fire on him. Do you have any description at all on the suspects? Yeah, we have two white males, approximately 40 years of age, well-dressed. Local residents were out in full force today, but those we talked to said they didn't see nor hear anything. Did you hear anything last night? No. Nothing at all? Until the sirens came. That's how I ran. Nothing at all. I didn't hear nothing. When did you first find out about it? About 10.30. Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear any gunshots. Did you see anybody running from the car? No. Pasquale's burrito was no stranger to police nor to organized crime. In fact, he's listed in the 1983 report of the Pennsylvania Crime Commission as an active member of the Philadelphia La Cosa Nostra. Spirito is listed as a soldier in the crime family of Nicky Scarfo and a close associate of underworld boss Harry the Hunchback Riccobini. He was convicted of racketeering in June of last year and was free on bond pending an appeal. So the question for law enforcement now is whether the shooting was an isolated incident or if we'll be seeing renewed violence among the underworld in Philadelphia. Action News reporter Vernon Odom has more on the state of organized crime in the Delaware Valley. Philadelphia lawyer Malcolm Lazen resigned as Pennsylvania Crime Commission chairman after completing this year's report on organized crime in the Commonwealth. He'll return to private life, but he's leaving with a number of ominous warnings about the steady growth of mob influence and power in this state, with Atlantic City's Nicky Scarfo firmly in charge, despite his current imprisonment. Nicodemus Scarfo, we believe, is in charge. Uh, we believe that the way in which he is able to keep control of the family is by virtue of his insurance policy through the Gambino and Genovese families in New York. What does that mean? That, what that means is that if you take on Nicky Scarfo, you have to pay the price in terms of the Gambino and Genovese family coming after you. That's, 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 you a heavy, that's a heavy duty insurance policy. Therefore, are you suggesting... And for those who believe the mob is a myth and crime still doesn't pay, Lazen disclosed this tidbit about the estate of the late Angelo Bruno. Uh, we have information from, I would say, a very reliable informant that despite the fact that Angelo Bruno, at least in appearance, left nothing in terms of estate, that in fact through a variety of conduits, that his estate is probably worth someplace between nine to eleven million dollars. Lazen, a prominent local Republican and former candidate for district attorney, also takes some political pot shots at party boss Billy Meehan. All this at 10.30 Sunday morning on Issues and Answers. Vernon Odom, Channel 6, Action News.
Scarfo put contracts out on 70-year-old Harry the Hunchback and Harry's younger brothers, Sonny and Bobby. The boss made it clear that any of his soldiers should consider it their duty to rub out the troublesome Riccobini brothers. Nicky the Crow and a few of his mob associates took up the challenge, not for money, but for the chance it might offer them to advance within the crime family. You never get paid. There's no such thing as being paid for a hit. There's no such thing as outsiders that we hire to kill somebody. And for two years, all we did was just hunt people to kill them. Nicky the Crow's immediate superior was Pat the Cat Spirito, a veteran Scarfo soldier. Pat the Cat and Nicky the Crow, along with fellow hitman Charles Iadich, began plotting the murder of Sonny Riccobini. But the plotting began to run into problems. Every time the hit squad was ready to go kill Sonny, Pat the Cat would call it off. Nicky the Crow began to believe that Pat was dragging his feet. He was right. Pat gets drunk and starts talking treason. And he starts saying, hey, Scarfo's no good. These guys are no good. All they want you to do is kill, 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 kill. That's all we have to do is kill, kill, kill. I look at, I, I look at my partner and I say, hey, this guy's talking treason here. I don't want to hear this. Now, Nicky the Crow and his partner, Charlie, began to fear for their own lives. Scarfo was waiting for them to kill Sonny Riccobini, and the job wasn't getting done. They decided to go over Spirito's head and reported his treasonous talk to his boss, Salvatore Merlino. He says, you see, Pat, it's this. Take care of it. It's a good thing you guys come here because you guys were in a lot of trouble. That means this when he means trouble. Now, Nicky the Crow had to turn his gun on his mentor, Pat Spirito. It was kill or be killed. Nicky and his partner, Charlie, devised a scheme to hit Spirito. They would murder him during one of their planning sessions for the Sonny Riccobini hit. I was going to put a small 25 in my pocket. So Pat couldn't see it in my back pocket. I would be waiting outside my apartment house for him to pick me up and jump right in the car to the front seat. We would then go pick Charlie up. Nick Caramondi and Charlie Ian each told Pat they needed to drop off some loan shark money at this corner. When Pat pulled the car to the curb, they would shoot him and run to a getaway car. But there was a glitch in the plan. As we're going to the rendezvous point, where we're going to do it at, some lady trying to park a car and all kind of cars back up behind us. Charlie gets nervous. I'm nervous. We get to a corner. It's four corners. You got cars running north. You got cars running east. Charlie says, pull over here. Pat pulls over. He looks at me. I look at him. Now I'm waiting for Charlie. I got my hand on the door. All of a sudden, bang, and it made a hell of a noise. And Pat goes like this. Right, like his head leans right to me. And Charlie pumps another one. Bang. Pat the Cat was dead. Now the two hitmen had to make their escape into crowded traffic, swarming with potential eyewitnesses. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more content. Feel free to give us your feedback and suggestions on who we should do next in the comments. This is Infinitely Productions. We love you.